Hey everyone, welcome back to Small Batch Devs. My name is Austin. And I'm Elliot. Today we're going to be covering RxJS and some of the best practices to get you started. Just as a forewarning, RxJS can be a little tricky to master, so just don't get discouraged if you don't understand everything right away. Yeah, and stick around for the end because we're going to show you some actual coding examples. Without any further ado, let's get started. So what is RxJS? So RxJS is a JavaScript library that makes our code more reactive. It uses a construct called observables that are really exactly what they sound like. They are basically an object in our code that just looks for events and when it gets an event, it reacts to it. The other big topic in RxJS are pipes. Pipes are a great way to call different methods in a specific order when data comes back from your observables. So you'll have an observable that watches for these events. And as those events happen, you can send that event data through a pipe. This is going to transform your data or perform some other action in your application. Observables and pipes are the core of RxJS. And the rest that you'll see just lets you deep dive into the world of reactive programming. So why would we use RxJS? Well, let me tell you, Austin. <laughs> If you haven't heard of reactive programming, odds are you're not using it. You're probably coding imperatively. Imperative programming means that you have to manually ask for your data and it's not being automatically pushed to you. To make your application smoother, you're gonna wanna compare these programming paradigms. A good example is when you first load a page and you ask for data from your database, that's imperative programming. But with reactive programming, you're able to turn that first call to the database into an observable and then react to any changes in the database from then on out. It's pretty sweet. A, <laughs> a really popular library built on that exact principle is Firebase. And we actually have a couple videos on that. It's pretty awesome. The point we're trying to get across is that reactive programming can make your app much faster when reacting to the world around it and will just give your users a much more pleasant and smooth experience. It's always a good thing. The first step in using RxJS in your application is installing it. We already have it installed, but the command you're going to run is npm install RxJS, and that's going to load the latest version of RxJS in your application. Once you have RxJS installed, the imports are handled a little bit differently. So RxJS breaks everything out into small methods that you can use. And when you're importing, you're going to import these methods on a per use basis so that you're not weighing your app down with code that you're not using. You can check out our example here where we're importing different operators from RxJS, like the map and the tap. And these are gonna be used in our pipes that we're gonna show you later on. Like now. Like, like right now, yeah. <laughs> so for our first example, let's start with something very simple. You can see here we're using the from event method, which is from RxJS. And all this is doing is listening to the click events on the DOM. So every time we click our mouse, it will console log clicked in the event. To demonstrate our first example, we're here on a new component that we created specifically for these demos. And all we're gonna do is click on the page and you can see that our log gets output. That's pretty neat. It's one of the coolest websites I've seen. The next step is to add our first pipe. You can see in our new example, we're still listening to the DOM click event, but we've added a pipe to it. And what this pipe is gonna let us do is actually react to that click event. So inside of our pipe, we need to use what are called RxJS operators. And these operators are pre-built functions that allow you to manipulate the data in certain predefined ways. Uh, for example, here we have a tap operator and the tap operator just gives you the data and you can do whatever you want to it without worrying about messing up that data for later on in the pipe. So our new observable is going to subscribe to the DOM click event and then our tap event is gonna null out that event and you'll see in our console log output that we're still getting that event because the tap operator doesn't actually change the data in your pipe. So here we are back on our demo site and if we just click around, you'll see that we still get the click console log with the full event data. And this is just showing that our tap operator is in fact not changing the data flowing through that RxJS pipe. The next example 
is very similar to the previous example, except we're using the map RxJS operator this time. Basically, the map operator will allow you to make modifications to the data in the event. So you can see here, we're nulling out the event and returning it. Obviously, every time we click, like the previous examples, uh, this event will be output. So back in our browser, we'll start clicking around again, and now we are getting null for our event. It's not outputting a bunch, but you can see here there is a number that is we're repeating the same thing, so it's adding a number next to it and not a bunch of separate console logs. Yeah, the map operator is going to be one of your more commonly used operators. True, true that, true. Now we're going to show you how to chain your RxJS operators in a single pipe. The chaining of operators in a pipe is a really good way of performing sequential operations on your data as it comes through your pipe. In this example, we are still nulling out our event in our map operator, but right after it, we're calling the tap operator to just console log and show that the data is changing throughout this pipe. So if we do a click here, you'll see that the tap operator is outputting second operator with a null. And that null is of course coming from the map operation that we're taking the event and nulling it out. And then you can still see we're still performing our clicked console log in the subscribe method. So you can use chaining to create a pretty expansive set of operations on your data as it comes through. In this example, we are creating a subject, and the subject is just a way of defining our own observables. You can see we just create an empty subject, and then we actually will pipe and add our own tap function, which just logs tapped and then our event data. And then we subscribe to the observable, which you have to do with all observables in, in order for them to actually go through and we are logging received event and then that same data event. And then you can see we have two lines that call dot next. And this is just us manually pushing an event through our stream, through our observable stream. When the page loaded, we get our first event, which goes through the tap and the subscription, and then our second event, which also goes through the same tap and subscription. Lastly, we're gonna show you kind of a big problem in RxJS that you need to be aware of and handle properly when using this. Here we have the interval function, which is specific to RxJS. And what it does is it sends out automatic events given a time period that you define. So our interval is going to send out an event every 500 milliseconds. And then we have a pipe that just console logs that the tap operator is executing and of course we're subscribing to it. So if we jump into the Firefox browser now, you can see that our interval is firing pretty rapidly and it's just gonna keep going and going and going and going and going. And the problem lies when you navigate away from this page. We're on a different page now. We're no longer on the demos page, but you can see our operator is still firing. And this is because we have not unsubscribed from that observable. And if you don't unsubscribe from your observables properly, it will keep doing this as long as your user is on your website. And that can lead to a huge memory leak. No one leaky memories. No. So let's plug that memory hole. So the solution is to, of course, unsubscribe from that observable. Uh, there are a number of ways to do this, but we're just going to set a timeout for five seconds and then unsubscribe from our interval. So we've now commented in the solution and it's just simply unsubscribing from our interval observable after five seconds. You can see now that we've jumped back into Firefox, we are seeing that our tapped operator has stopped console logging. And this is because after five seconds, we did unsubscribe from that observable. So if we navigate back to the home page, we of course have no more memory leak. So this is just something you need to be aware of. All observables should be unsubscribed to at some point and just keep your application's memory healthy. Today we talked about some of the basics of RxJS and went over some real life practical coding examples. We also made you aware of unsubscribing to your observables so that you can avoid some costly memory leaks in your application. So thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. See ya. Peace. So what the heck is RxJS? Don't do that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God.
God. 